sure that the heat was on? He says, no. You know? Now my son came all the way out from Colorado. Took uh, 36 hours. So that's one of my uh, Christmas gifts. It's also one of my testimonies. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, he started when it was minus 17. So we're in a heat wave, man, today. So. <laughs> You know, so rejoice in what we have and, and uh, see, see what we have. We are blessed. Blessed to, to, to be here and, and uh, blessed to have you all out this morning. Uh, this morning we're going to sing a, lot, a little few more Christmas carols. Or we're going to do a little uh, special music and, and a few things. And because of that, uh, the service will hopefully not be too, too long. Uh, if anybody heard my... Christmas Eve message yesterday uh, online. My wife told me it was just a little over three minutes. And I said, whoa, that's pretty good. <laughs> you get it all in in, in, in three minutes? That, 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 that really is amazing. You know, it must have been a Christmas miracle that the, the pastor only spoke that short. But praise God. So uh, as usual, Edna's going to start with, with the music and just let the the music speak to your heart, turn off your phones, turn your attention to God today, and uh, let him speak to you. Amen. Thank you. 
Merry Christmas. <laughs> Praise God. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Wonderful Merry to have you all here. And I was just sitting in the pew and thinking, you know, I would rather be no place else but the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, to worship Him and to wish Him a, a wonderful, happy birthday. Praise God. So, and it is because of Him that we are here. So, praise the Lord. We ought to give Him thanks. So, I, I do welcome you all here, and I pray that you have a wonderful day, even after you leave this place, celebrating with your family and friends and whomsoever. God bless you all. Um, I want to remind you that you can give to person to person. We collect it at the end of the month, so I would say next week would be the um, the last, you know, even though it's January 1st, we're going to probably wait till that week to bring it down to person to person. So anything that you can bring in, a can of beans even, I've said often enough that uh, that's all you need to bring if that's all you have. Because um, if you remember... In the Bible, how God increased the little boy in his lunch, the loaves and the fishes, it's not a big deal for him to take your can of beans and expand it to however he wants to do it. <clears throat> okay, and then I also want to remind you, in the narthex is a tree, and you will notice it has gloves and hats and stockings and different things on it um, to help keep children warm for this winter. And yeah, today will remind us how much they need that. <laughs> so it's going to the Carver Center, and our own pastor, Lenore, will be taking it down, and uh, that's going to be a blessing. So I would say probably next week will be the last week, so if any of you want to bring anything to add to that, go ahead and do that too. Thanks the Lord. Then Mondays, we have prayer meeting at 5 o'clock. We do it by conference call. You can call the pastor's cell phone, 203-984-0367. You do not have to be a part of it every week. That is not a written rule. We let you come and go as you please. Also, if you don't want to be a part of the prayer group or can't be, but you want us to pray about something, send us a text and we will certainly pray for it. We have seen incredible miracles. Um, I believe in prayer. I'm a woman that believes in prayer. And, um, you know, my son is going to say, oh, Mom, do you have to say this? But, you know, he just drove all the way from Colorado Springs, okay? And if you were listening to the weather, you would have said, what the heck did he do that for? <laughs> and when I called him all through Indiana and Ohio, he was going like 30 miles an hour and seeing accidents left and right. And it was treacherous. But God. But God. And, you know, he woke me up a whole lot that night. Yeah, well, he was gone two nights, but especially yeah, not, the not. Lord. The Lord woke me up a lot, yes. <laughs> not Joey. No. Not Joey. <laughs> he, he wouldn't have done that, no. <laughs> but um, the Lord woke me up a lot, and, you know, I had an unease, and I just had to pray through it, keep praying through it, keep praying, praying through, through it. And um, when he came through that door, this was a happy mom. And I'm grateful to God, grateful to God. So I thank God. He's, he's in the business. And even Lynn, her, her son, had a five and a half hour delay on the train. Five and a half hours, not like 45 minutes, half an hour, but five and a half. I mean, my goodness. But he is here today, and we're thankful for that, too. So, and um, Ali's daughter was driving back to Florida, which it's not that much warmer down there either. So I don't know, but, you know, she made it, too. So we're, we're very grateful to God for that. Okay, and then we just want to remind you that next week is communion. We want to invite you back for our uh, New Year's Day service. Yes, that's what it is. Oh my gosh, already January 1st, 2023. Woo, my word. So you're all invited to come back. And if you uh, know of anybody who can't get out, just please remind them that we are on Facebook Live and we are on YouTube a little bit later after we get it all worked out. So. God bless you all. We pray you have a wonderful Christmas and a wonderful new year to come. God bless. Well, y'all ready to sing some Christmas carols? We go all year and we just kind of put them aside and we forget all about the Christmas carols and then we sing maybe one or this or that. So we're going to sing actually four different Christmas carols today. Now we're not going to sing all the verses, okay? Okay, but we are going to sing a couple. So 
We're going to sing the first one is, uh, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful. So you can stand up if you can, sit if you must. Uh, 188. We're going to sing the first and last verse. First and last verse. Turn that one up. All right. 
All right. God bless you. Christmas Eve, but since we didn't, we're doing it now. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. 
and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. <coughs> to be taxed with Mary is a spouse wife, being great with the child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. If you notice, we let the four Advent candles, and the one in the middle is called Christ candle, Christmas candle. So, uh, you know, praise God. Amen. Well, it's time for prayer. And uh, we have Pastor Lenore Jordan is going to offer prayer this morning. If you usually we have an opportunity to share a testimony, we've already had our my chance to share some of the testimony of, of Christmas. I'm sure she'll uh, ask you if you have any prayer concerns or uh, any testimony that you want to share before she takes us to the Lord in prayer. Sister, what a wonderful to have you here this morning. And here's a little pen if you want to write something down. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And um, as you know, we're here, and I'm thankful that we're all here. We made it. We chose to come. And maybe someone in your family did not make it here, or there's something in your heart or in your mind that you have, that you're harboring in your heart to pray for, or even to make up with a family member. I don't know, I'm just being a little led by the Lord. Maybe there's someone you silently want to pray for that you're kind of disappointed in. You know, we're all going into a new year, and it's time for us to clear our hearts, clear our minds, and make personal amends, or even when you go home, pick up the phone, call that person, just something in your heart, or that we're here together, we can pray for that individual, or there may be someone in the hospital, someone that's stubborn in their home, and they won't go to be seen by a doctor. Let's pray for them this morning, and um, let's just keep Christ in our hearts and Him at the forefront. So if there be one, two, or three, raise your hand, or however you want to come forward, the altar is here. This is what the altar is for. And let us pray. Let us keep them on our minds. Even those that are out there that are suffering, it's so cold, and that's God letting us know, look, we got to really, really, really pray that people 
get their lives together or have what they need in the homeless population and so on and so forth. Just God reminding us that that's what we're here for to each one reach one. Amen? Amen. So let us either, however you desire, come to the altar, personal prayer, we're here. Amen? I would just um, like to give God prayer for uh, any members that we have that don't know the Lord, and um, you know, yeah, a big burden on my heart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 I'd like to pray for <clears throat> Marge Hopper, who is in hospice care. Edna? Uh, yeah. Janet, Tammy, Janet, uh, Michelle, Gary, and me. Yes, and back. Yeah? I have a few family members. That's a terrible relationship. They need a lot of grace. Amen. Family. <laughs> Yes. Right up front. For people and for my mommy and my brother, Lord, give her strength to endure all the family struggles that she's going through. You know, she was just with pain and just with being like a home and home by herself. You know what I'm saying? Just dealing with just getting older. You know what I'm saying? And just not, you know, having the, the company around that she so, so wanted every day. You know what I'm saying? Just give her that peace. And let her know that long as she has God in her life and on her side, she's going to definitely be all right. But we need to keep her lifted and pray that she always has that. Yes. Um, the ministers that um, in prayer, Pastor Jerry Hickey, um, Rod Winner, Rod Whitmore. We have four pastors. We have four pastors for prayer. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Lift your hands, how would you pray? Your comfort level. Let us go to the throne of grace. Dear God, we are humbly coming before you, God, as your children, oh God, as earthen vessels here chosen for such a time as this, oh God, to bombard heaven for the people who you've given us to lay before the throne of grace, oh God. I lift up Marge Ecker unto you, O oh God. God, you know our ending from beginning. Your name is Alpha and Omega. And God, we know that you know the last time we take our breath, O oh God, and whatever the desires of our heart is, O oh God, we ask that you relieve her, O oh God. And God, we thank you for comforting the family that's associated with Marge Ecker, O oh God. And we lift up Mike's concern before you, oh God, and thanking you, oh God, that you know every hair on our head, oh God, and you, 
You just know each and every one of our situations and the desires that people have deep down inside of them, oh God, that they only know. But we detect these things, oh God, because you place us around people, Lord God. And we lift up Janet right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, and the prayers that are going up, hallelujah, and for the family prayer. Oh God, we lift up the families that are being represented, that don't know you in a part of their sins, oh God, that they would come before you and just surrender, hallelujah, oh God, and every knee must bow and that every tongue must confess that you are Lord. You're not only Lord, you're Lord of Lords. You're not only the king, you are king of kings. Yes, Lord. And we thank you and we continuously pray for the four pastors that are on the hearts of those that are connected to the prayer. God, yeah. your word says 82, 3, 4, on earth, touching and agreeing. Here you are in the midst of us, oh God. And if your name is lifted high, you will draw. So God, continue to draw through our lives, through our prayers, through our petitions, oh God. And God, the young man that needs guidance and that's praying for those in his family that don't know you, God, by his testimony, oh God, let them look at his life and let them see how young he is, oh God, and that he would be a testimony to all of those around him, oh God, and everybody else that requested prayers that are known and requests that are unknown, oh God, I ask that you work on our hearts, hallelujah, and that you work on those that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. I decree and declare and I speak healing in this atmosphere that even those that are suffering in their bodies, that they too, oh God, can be relieved because if you believe, have faith as a mustard seed, oh God, we thank you that we all can be healed of past trauma, hallelujah, anything that opposes where we're going in you, oh God, we ask right now that you continue to work on our hearts. God, Mary hid the word in her heart, and God, we can hide prayers in our heart, and we can relieve anything that's not like you in our hearts. Make our hearts pure, make our hearts just, and let us have hope peace and love in this season as we celebrate the life of Jesus. I lift Community Baptist up unto you, oh God. I lift up Pastor Saunders unto you, oh God. Lady Saunders unto you, oh God. Hallelujah. I lift up all of their children and their beautiful grandchildren, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the lives that they touch, even the generations that they will touch that we won't even see in the natural, God. I thank you for everybody that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you that even when they get home, things will be better. In your son's name, I pray all these prayer requests and petitions in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray for our sister Lenore, Lord God, and we pray for her church. New International prayer Place of Worship, praise God. Vice versa. Praise God. Hallelujah. We pray for that church, Lord God, that you have a new year, a new prosper. Lord God, continue to touch them and bless them and touch this beautiful woman, Lord God. That she has done so much for you, Lord God. Bless her family and continue to guide, direct, and keep her in the center of your world. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, before we sing the next hymn, you know, some things just, just came to me as she was praying. You know, we said they were praying for those four pastors and they still are in need of healing. But two of the four are doing much better. We heard word this week that uh, the one pastor out in, in Colorado Springs, uh, James Moffat, has really been able to uh, stop the coughing and all these other things that he's been so weakened with and actually go back to doing his teaching uh, on the internet in, in uh, Mexico, oh, Mexico, right? China, China. Uh, he has been a missionary to China and he's just 
uh, able to get back. And when he does a, a, a Bible study, it's usually two or three hours. And so all that coughing was, was you know, he wasn't able to do it for quite a while. He, he's reaching out to China again, so praise God. And another one that was had cancer and was in remission, uh, he's had cancer again, and he's back in remission. So that's an answer to prayer right there. He's back in remission from the cancer. Yes. And the other two pastors were just still praying for the uh, hearing of uh, Rod, and they, they will be healed, and, uh, you know, that... Uh, the Lord will just continue to heal it. Doctors are, are good, but the, the Lord is the great physician. So let that, that go out. And uh, Larry Hickey, uh, continue that slow process of, of getting stronger and stronger. So praise God. Uh, that's just in, in the way of that. So let's look at 202. Everybody open up your hymn books. You can sit. You can sit for this one. 202. The first and last verse. First and last verse. Let it speak to your heart this morning. church, but there are so many that we really don't uh, take a look at that. We just took a look and I, I had my wife uh, read the long portion from Luke from chapter 2. Um, every Christmas Eve, we use my grandmother's Bible, that's my grandmother's Bible, uh, to read this particular portion, uh, 1 through 20. And the interesting part of the part that I really want to zero in on is that after they were told that the babe was born, after they were scared to death because of the angels, uh, they were said, you know, don't be afraid, and this will be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And the angels sang, and they were saying, wow, glory to God in the highest, and all this, and the, the shepherds could have just said, hey, wow, isn't that cool? There's a, you know, it's got to be because the angels were here and they told us it, 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 it's done, right? So now let's just get a little closer to the fire. Throw another log in that fire. You know, let's hunker down for the night, you know? You know? But no. They said, let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing. You see, God speaks to our hearts so many times, but my question to you, are you listening? Are you listening to what God has said to you to do? Are you getting up and going? You know, are you, are you just, you know, sitting? You know, we're not, you know, it says standing on the promises, but many of us are just sitting on the premises. Wow. 
You know, we're just here, you know. But when it says go, we're supposed to go. We're supposed to do. And the scripture that God put on my heart for today is from Ephesians uh, chapter 2, just one verse, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, that is a gift of God. God has given us a wonderful gift of salvation, and that gift of salvation gives us peace and strength. It gives us the ability to remember what is important. And, you know, I think, and I'm challenging you, that as we start this new year, here at this church, we're going to try a few new things. I thank God. I, John, Paul, thank you. Uh, it's just family members, friends. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for bringing them today. God bless you. So new things are, are, are happening. And I believe that there's a change in it, that God wants us to move. But the thing we need to hold on to, the most important thing, is the gift of God. That Jesus Christ is the gift of God. He came at Christmas. Well, was that on, you know, last night? Uh, this morning? Uh, you know, in the spring? In the summer? Well, whenever he comes into your heart, let Jesus come into your heart because it is a gift. It is a gift through faith. We are saved through faith, through grace, through this mercy. As we look at this, I was going to preach a little bit more on this. But as I said, that Bible is my grandmother's Bible. Okay. It's kind of fallen apart. I like it because it's large print. Hallelujah. You know, you know. <laughs> They keep making those letters smaller, you know? But as I was bringing it out here to read this particular portion, and I asked my wife to read it, this little piece of paper fell out. And it had been folded up. It is something that's in her hand that she wrote, okay? And I just looked at it, and I said, you know what? This is something that was in her Bible that she held on to. This was kind of her testimony. I've used it, I don't know how many years I've been here, you know, 25 Christmases, and used that Bible every Christmas. And it didn't fall out until this morning. I'm sitting there going, well, Lord, I, you know, I don't know about signs and wonders, but I think that that is pretty interesting. And in her hand, it says this. Forgive me if I get a little emotion. Amen. It says, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God who died for me and was raised again for my salvation according to the Scriptures. Forgive me of my sins. I now receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and make me as you want me to be. Amen. Amen. And then it says, you are now in the family of God. Four things I want to remember. God loves you. Two, you need to repent of your sins. Three, believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. And four, reserve time as to have him as your personal Lord and Savior. You need to receive him to take time to do this. I believe that she received the Lord. I believe that she trusted God. But to write it down and to take it and to put it in your Bible... To remind yourself every now and then, did I really make that commitment? Do you say, Lord, I believe. Do you take these things and know that as we do this, we confess it and that we can probably read it again and again, well, you know, I already repented of my sins. Well, that was yesterday, you know. Did somebody cut you off on the way to church this morning? Did you have any uh, hard, 
heart things, issues of people that did things or didn't do things, remembered or didn't remember certain things? Are we ready to repent of those things? Are we ready to forgive our family members? Are we ready to love them with unconditional love? You see, God just put it on my heart that when I see this, do we keep something like this in our Bibles to remind us each and every day what we need to do? You see, the shepherds, they didn't just sit around. As I said, they got up and they saw it. And when they saw, they were in wonder. Wow, the angels were right. You expected anything different? Of course they were right. This is a sign unto you that is born this day. That was so long, long ago. It's the same sign that is today for you. Born today, for today, today in the city of David. Remember what happened. That it happened for you. A Savior was born. We need to see the signs of God all around us. We need to walk and we need to talk and we need to tell people about it. You know, and I share this with you all the time about telling people that Jesus loves you. You need to tell people that. It's really simple. And you're, you're going to get some strange responses. You know? You know? <laughs> oh, that's something. Or just, uh-huh. They don't want to hear it. The world does not want to hear it. They don't even want to hear about Santa Claus. They don't want to hear about uh, even anything that's not, they just are in the darkness. Let me share you with that again that is so, so clear. For by grace, let me break that word down, grace, unmerited favor. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. By grace you have been saved through faith and not by yourselves. It is a gift of God. You have a gift already here this morning. Are you going to receive it? Are you going to take that? And when you take that gift, you know, I don't know about you, but when I was a little kid, you know, Christmas morning was really good. You know, you got something and you know, you sat around and you had all kinds of candy, so you got all sugared up, and woo, you know. And usually for breakfast, you had something that was, was sweet, you know. Whatever it was, you know. Whatever it was, it was, it was good. And you, and you did, and you're excited about it. But then you got so excited, I got to go over and tell Johnny next door, look what I got. What did you get? And it wasn't. You know, you couldn't take all the toys, but your most, you know, whatever was that one thing that year that you got that was, you know, look what I got, you know? And it really meant something. And you were excited about it. And when you saw what they got, you were excited about it. I don't care if it was, you know, I got one Christmas that I had something that was really, it was a radio. Oh, a radio. AM, FM? No, just AM. You know? And it had a pillow speaker, a thing that came out and went underneath your pillow, you know? And my dad had bought it because it was being sold from the hospital because they were so old. But for me, it was like, wow! You, woo! And in the late of night, if I woke up and I really couldn't get back to sleep, I would start, you know, this is, this is old school, guys. I don't, you, you didn't push a button, you, you tuned it. There was a little dial. And you could go between different stations. And you could hear, and the game that I played was, let me find a station that is the farthest away. Well, I was out in Michigan, and you could get some Canadian stations, and you could get some, you know, ones that were out, you know, maybe, you know, in Ohio or something. But every now and then, you get a New York station. Oh, New York, woo, New York City, wow. I don't care if it was a talk station or not, I just I had to listen until they said where it was. And then I could go searching again, and searching again. 
My question for you, are you searching through the word of God? Are you seeing the gift that he has given to you and that you are ready, willing, and able to tell somebody else about it? Are you ready to write it down? You know, a promise. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God, that you died for me and raised up again for my salvation according to the scriptures. Do you believe what this Bible says? Do you believe what the word of God says? This Christmas, I want you to truly, truly, truly look at what do you believe and then be like the shepherds. Test it out. Test it out and see if God is really showing you. This is a sign unto you. God will show you signs and wonders. He will show you things. He will direct your path. You'll go where he wants you to go. And all of a sudden, he is real. He is real. I know a, a, a guy who went through a lot of things. He went through alcohol and all kinds of, of problems. And he would drive past this church. And then one day, he said he really felt that God was set, speaking to him. And he says, everything that you heard as a child is true. Everything that the word of God says is true. Whoa. My grandmother was a great lady. I never thought of her being a sinner. I never thought of these things. But right after she says, according to the scripture, she says, forgive me of my sins. Do we do that on a regular basis? Do we look and say, hey, God, I need to be forgiven? We look at the a simplest thing, and I'm not going to take much more, a couple minutes here, and we're going to sing one more again. But we look at the, the Lord's Prayer. You know, that we forgive as we are forgiven. We forgive so that we can be forgiven. Is there somebody this morning that you need to forgive? Is there somebody who has wronged you? It doesn't matter. Forgive them. What good does it do to have an ought against that person? Forgive that person. And let them know. Get up like the, the uh, shepherds did and they went and they said, do something about it. Because you see, they went and they saw, but then they guess what they did? When they left that place, they started telling, hey, did you see what I saw? Woo, man, I'm so excited because of what God told me I was going to see and then I saw it and that's what I'm going to tell you. And they said, really? Really? If you don't believe me, ask him. You know, because there was a bunch of them, right? And they all were able to have the same story. Whoa, look what God's doing. I feel so much better. Man, when I was out there, you know, with all the taxes they're raising up and this whole thing with the census and they, they went to this little town, you know, Joseph went to, to Bethlehem because that's where he was from to be taxed. Oh, man, I was all bummed out. I was all upset. But when I saw what God is doing, whew, look what God has done. He sent a savior. Receive that gift this morning. If you will, please receive that gift. And then once you've received it, maybe even write it down. And remember to tell somebody else about how good God is. Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, the Lord God, we thank you. I pray through this foolishness of just sharing these few scriptures of what you are doing, what you have done, and what you have yet to do. We thank you for that gift of salvation through grace, unmerited favor. We thank you, Lord God, that we have that free gift. If we can ask for forgiveness, you are there. You are faithful and just to forgive us from all unrighteousness. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. Lord God, we thank you for that promise. And yes, Lord, we confess our sins yet again. Each and every one of us have things that we need to do better for you. Lord, we thank you for not holding them against us, Lord God. We thank you for this wondrous gift that you have given to us through your shed blood. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's sing our last hymn. It's Silent Night. <laughs> Yes. 
going to sing the first verse. Then Penta's going to continue to play a little bit. Thank you. 